in this short video we will be taking a look at the first section of the essay called hegemonic masculinity rethinking the concept this was written by r d r w connell and james m mercer and we will be looking only at the origin formulation and application of this particular terminology in the studies that have taken place since then He talks about how this concept was formulated nearly two decades ago, and it was formulated during a study that was carried out by sociologists in Australia to understand the behavior of teenagers in terms of gender. Okay, and we find that it has been influenced by the concept of masculinity as well as has contributed very strongly. to the concepts of men gender and social hierarchy it has been also used in many fields of research related to gender violence and education also a number of conferences have been organized around this particular term and it has led to the growth of the term in the last two decades it has also received a number of criticisms from many different quarters including sociological psychological post structuralist and materialist so therefore the critique feels a need for reexamination of this term that is hegemonic masculinity in the light of changing power political leaderships across the world and the changing family structures and understanding of sexuality itself now we are going to take a look at the origins of this term how did this term come about and what has been contributed factors to the growth of this particular term it was first proposed as a term in the reports from a field study of social inequality in australian high schools where clear evidences of multiple hierarchies existing between the men itself came to the forefront many teenagers espoused experiences of inequalities within their own gender because of the social class and other factors even within the schools that they were studying this led to the understanding of an active project of gender construction that was taking place amongst the teenagers of australia it was further developed after this particular field report into what is called as towards a new sociology of masculinity which was written by the author himself and it critiqued the male sex role in literature this also contributed to the development of hegemonic masculinity as a concept in 20 years ago okay the concept also proposed multi existence of multiple masculinities and therefore also the hierarchy or hegemony that would exist between them another contributing factor to the development of the concept of hegemonic masculinity was the feminist movement because within the feminist movement a realization of different kinds of feminisms catering to different societies as well as different patriarchies and the interlinking of other marginalization issues like caste class ethnicity etc brought into forefront the understanding that no particular movement is without complexity it also led to many men who were firm supporters of feminism and equal rights also to examine their own conditioning and their own contribution to patriarchy within the society the gender and power the quotation that is there from the essay that was written on hegemonic uh, masculinity became the most quoted page on masculinity hegemonic masculinity and it emphasized femininity also as a way of combating hegemonic masculinity many feminist theories of patriarchy and debates on men's role in transforming patriarchy in the feminist movement itself also led to further examination of the concept 
of hegemonic masculinity and contributed to a better understanding of the term and an expansion of the term to include more gender issues. Especially in the 70s and 80s, the new left men supported feminists and started focusing on the class differences. This also led to examining of other classes of people and the hegemonic relationship that existed between them in the society, which included the understanding of classes of men within the gender of men itself who had hegemonic relationships, which were either defined by the class they belonged to, the ethnicity they belonged to, the class they belonged to, or even the race that they belonged to. Similarly, within the feminist movement, women of color such as Maxine Bakazin, Angela Davis, and Bell Hooks criticized the racial biases that existed within the feminist movement and bifurcated into other forms of color-based feminism, which also led to men examining the suppression of men by men and therefore trying to understand the masculine hegemony that existed within male gender also. The concept of hegemony itself is important in laying the groundwork for the concept of hegemonic masculinity. It lays the groundwork for questioning any universalizing claim about the category of men. It cannot be claimed that all men are similar because or equal because within the gender of men or the classification of the half of human race as men, there exists clear differentiations, clear sense of uh, you know, uh, hierarchies as well as discrimination. The Gramscian term hegemony was current at the time that this author was attempting to understand the civilization of the class relationship. It was specifically used in that context. Therefore, the adoption of the Gramscian term of hegemony itself is focused on the historical changes which are mobilizing and clearly also demonstrating the changes that are taking place within that historical context. And therefore, because, uh, firstly, the male gender does not have a historical context of hegemony, it becomes a little difficult to apply the concept of hegemony to masculinity itself because uh, it's not just the result of historical changes that have taken place, but actually is a much more interlinked and complex idea that has been have evolved through other intersectional issues in society. Let's take a look now at social psychology and sociology's contributions to the understanding and development of the term hegemonic masculinity. In discussion of gender issues, this historical sweep is not there, like I just pointed out in the previous slide. The hegemony is reduced to simple cultural context control, but that is not the case with how gender control functions. Social psychology and sociology in the 1970s discussed more about the male sex role within the society. And a lot of writings about male sex roles creating oppression within the society for men also came about. These writings were critical of the definitive male roles that were defined by the society, the gender expectations that were placed on men within the society. And this became the initial basis for anti-sexist movement, which include sexism against men also. The criticism of the sex role theory, therefore, led to also taking a look at blurring of behavior and norm, homogenizing effects of having these sex roles, and difficulty in actually accommodating oneself to these particular forms of role theory, roles that men and women have to perform. Equally, gay rights movement have been responsible for the development of the concept of hegemonic masculinity. Because within the gay rights movement, it became very quickly visible 
that there was power and differences that existed even within the gay rights movement. And for that matter, gay movement also focused on the power and differences that existed between the heteronormative and the non-heteronormative, that is homosexual or homonormative behaviors of men. So the ones who were clearly assigned or clearly uh, inclined towards heteronormative behavior clearly had an edge over the ones who were homosexual and therefore, of course, marginal in the society. So the core concepts in gay liberation movement was focused on how these power structures work within the male, uh, male membership and how do the differences of sexual identities create hierarchies within these male member communities? It led to the analysis of the oppression of men and oppression by men. Okay? The gay rights movement also questioned the gender stereotypes that are associated again with men. Okay? So the stereotypes like being strong, uh, being emotionless, rational, uh, unexpressive, all of these gender stereotypes were questioned during the gay rights movement. The homosexual men's experiences with violence and prejudice from the straight men were also recorded while this movement was developing, which also led to a better understanding of the hegemonic masculinity that existed in the male, uh, male members of the society. The concept of homophobia was also developed in the 1970s, which attributed to the conventional male roles as well as to a better development of the concept of hegemonic masculinity. Moreover, gay men's ambivalent relationship with patriarchy, where they did not follow any of the stereotypical roles as well as expectation of men, and they also did not fit into the conventional masculinity, also led to a better understanding, awareness, and dialogue about masculinity within the society, which contributed again to an awareness of hegemonic masculinity existing within the society. Certain other fields have also contributed actively to the origins of this term or in building the term. There have been a number of empirical social researches which have been carried out especially based on field resources, studies in the social, subjects like sociology, anthropology, etc., where local gender hierarchies and local cultures of masculinity have been studied by scientists all across the world in different cultures, and a number of papers have been established about this. The ethnographic realism of these uh, localized cultures as well as localized gender hierarchies have confirmed the existence and plurality of masculinities. That is, a number of masculinities exist. It's not simply masculinity. It is actually masculinities that exist with different gender roles, expectations, as well as gender behavior expectations in different cultures. The complexity of the gender construct for men therefore comes to the forefront like it has been for women through feminism. And the active struggle of dominance by one group of men over the other men also gets reflected through these empirical researches. Let's take a look now at the contribution of psychoanalysis to the whole concept of hegemonic masculinity. Freud, in his famous work, Wolf Man, examined the relation or the position of adult personality. He says to be an adult is to be constantly under pressure. It's a system that is always under pressure because you're firm at all points of time. The countercurrent is generally repressed. So if a man or an adult tries to swim against the expectations, generally a particular person will be repressed so as to ensure conformity within the society. Stoller also added to this particular concept by talking about gender identity and mapping the variations in the boys' development, especially in terms of boys who later on went on to identify themselves as transsexuals or transgender. 
genders and how it led how does the society or patriarchal society itself contribute to these boys gender identity and counter cultures that they have created to then challenge these gender identities psychoanalysis have also taken a look at the psychology and mental space of men how men's power have contributed to these spaces the range of possibilities that are there in gender development when this is not told and the tensions and contradictions that exist within the concept of masculinity for men psychologically emotionally and mentally so now a revision of what we have understood in this particular video we have looked into how research in australia had on school students and existence of masculinities led to the development of the concept of hegemonic masculinities and an understanding of how power and hierarchy exist within masculine behavior or the community of men the initial sources that contribute to contribute to this concept was feminist movement in which left men support feminist movement as well as colored women spoke about racial biases these all these attributed men starting to examine their own position how they have been shaped by patriarchy the gramscian concept of hegemony was also looked at how it is problematic my particular concept to the idea of masculinity because of non existing historical context there we looked at the social psychology and sociology's contribution to the concept of hegemonic masculinity to the male sex role theory and anti sexist movement in the 1970s it also uh, criticized the sex role theory the gay movement which also contributed to the entire movement or understanding of hegemonic masculinity to their questioning of power and differences that exist between men within the society questioning of gender stereotypes and uh, not conforming to the gender stereotypes especially for men developing the concept of homophobia and displaying ambiguous relationship with patriarchy and masculinity similarly empirical social resources and research and psychoanalysis also contributed to the furthering of the term of hegemonic masculinity through field studies form the existence of plurality of masculinities and a complex gender construction that existed in the society freud's whole concept of adult personality being a system under pressure was also used to contribute to this particular concept as well as stroller's development of the concept of gender identity was also used for further things in developing the idea of hegemonic masculinity now the next section will look at the formulation of this 